The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September 20th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question you can't dial in, Stevie's got your back. Send me an email. Send it off early, please. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on fantastic, fabulous Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. As we begin our day, we have a sea of red out there. We've got all the U.S. indices that we track are trading to the downside. You've got uh, Dow is off 67 points. The S&P is off 28. NASDAQ 10147. Russell's down 14. Semis 118. Tranny's a 558-point move, 3.5% there. Uh, the NASDAQ composite is off 123. The spot VIX is trading below its 50-day exponential moving average. Yes, yeah, S&P is down 28 points, and the spot VIX is trading lower as well. Welcome to Quad Witching Friday. You've got gold up 29 bucks, silver's up six pennies, light three crude is up, well, it's basically flat. Natural gas is up three cents, 30-year treasury, off nine takes, printed out at 124.27. Our leader in the clubhouse to the upside is Constellation Energy. Constellation Energy trading out right now at uh, 20, uh, trading up 28 bucks, 28.50 to be exact, 13.6% to the upside. Uh, behind that is Eli Lilly up 19, CrowdStrike Holdings up 12, Booking Holdings up 11, Supermicro is up 9 bucks. To the downside, our leaders out there started off by FedEx down 46 points. That's one of the reasons that we've got a move of 560 points to the downside inside the transportation index. The uh, monolithic power system, a $35 move. Asimil Holdings, $34. Corpus Pharmaceuticals, 30 bucks. Lamb Research, 26. KLA Corp down 18. So we got movers and we've got shakers. Let's begin our day by taking a look at New York Stock Exchange Advanced Decline Oscillator. We pull that up on our screen. What do we know? We never did close above the plus 150 level out there. The high that we got. Oh, I, I take that back. We, we did close above that 152.32 uh, yesterday. So that got us into that over that, that, that classification, immediately put us into that overbought condition. So right now, what we can say is, at this stage of the game, we don't know if this is a top or is this just simply the market's working off its overbought condition. We're going to go with the latter at this point in time. We are especially going to go with the latter at this time with that spot VIX index trading below its 50-day exponential moving average. So this can certainly move back uh, further. And if we get down below the zero threshold level, you know, then we may be looking at something else. But right now at 11.10 in the morning, this should be, this pullback here should be expected. Why? Because when we use this advanced client oscillator, which is a very cool tool out there, we look at that plus 150, that minus 150 level out there, and that helps us to identify when we're either overbought or oversold. So that condition is being worked off. Where are key areas of support? Well, you know, key areas of support on the move lower out here, we can easily say would be their perigee pivot points. Perigee came in, that's the lunar phase, when the moon is a closest to the Earth. I think that was on Monday, Tuesday, I think it was Tuesday morning, if I'm not mistaken. 
Now, what that does, that sets up a key level of potential support or resistance. In this case here, because price is above those levels, it would be an area of support. So in the case of the ES Mini, should things get uh, moving to the downside, the level you'd be watching there is 5708.75. In the case of the NQ, that number is 19728. In the case of gold, I don't even think that comes into play, but that number would be 260430. In the case of silver, it's down at 31 even Stephen. In the case of light sweet crude, it's at 6946. And even in the case of the US dollar index, it's down at 100.39. Yeah, so we got the US dollar index trading higher, gold trading higher. Silver kind of flat out there. It's a beautiful thing. What else do we want to look at? I think on this page, really not much out there. So let's go ahead and let's start getting to the play-by-play -play charts out there. So if you give me just a moment, I'll get that set up on my screen. Peter, this will help you out. You wanted to see the ES Mini in detail. We're going to start, though, with the NQ. The only reason we're going to start with the NQ is because that's what's on my screen. And as you know, it takes a minute or so for all these charts to update. So let's begin with the NQ and go take a look at what it's signaling to you and I. Let's begin with the daily time frame. As we had mentioned, the daily time frame still has a TD9 count top that's in place. That the high of that uh, pattern took place on August 22nd. That's what price needs to close above to negate that signal and, quite frankly, trigger an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. That number, again, in the uh, NQ is at the 2251.25 level. Right now, we can see that a sausage and change line changed colors yesterday, went from red to green. What's that mean, Stevie? That means that the price oscillator is now above zero. Those are bullish conditions. But when the line changes color, now more so when we actually have a confirmed top. We don't have any kind of confirmed top on the NQ out here, but doesn't have to be. But most times it's when you get a, a some type of confirmed top. Either way, uh, price should pull back and test that oscillator and change line. Right now, print at 19.611. If price does that, whether it's over the next couple of days, today, or maybe it's sometime next week, if we get some type of topping signals in the equity future contracts out here. But that's the key level. If price were to pull back and test and reject, that means bounce off that line, currently printed at 19611. It'll probably be a little bit lower if price were to move lower, and maybe that's around the 19517 area. But if price did test and reject that, that would be a bullish signal. I don't have a top on the uh, a five hour time frame chart. We don't necessarily need a top. What we do know right now is price is trading below the center of its profile, which is at 20.009 level. Now, this candle that we're in uh, right now doesn't complete until 2 p.m. If at 2 p.m., price is trading below 20.009, that's going to suggest a move back to the 19.622 level. But before price can get there, it's going to have to test that daily oscillator and change line. In the case of the four hour time frame chart, price is trading below its bullish structured profile. No topping pattern. Maybe there was a sell the D point top out there. But either way, right now, this candle also closes at two. And a close below 19,945 is going to suggest lower price. That lower price here, I'd have to say, would be prior swing points. You know, maybe down around the 19,636 level. TD9 count top on the two hour time frame chart. Uh, we have price trading below its bullish structured profile as well. This chart here is going to complete at noon. And a close at noon below 19,950 could be signaling to move back to 19,636. That's its TD9 count breakout level. On the 60 minute time frame chart, it had a TD9 count top. And price right now, during this hour between 11 and 12, is testing its breakout level 19,900. 19,900. This is the area to be watching today. This could be a level of support. 50 minute time frame chart, it's gonna go ahead and confirm a TD9 count bottom in about a minute, complete that pattern at 11.30. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Before we get to the requests out there, because this was a request, let's take a look at the ES Mini. Let's go through it, uh, it in detail as well. So when we take a look at the ES Mini on the daily time frame, we'll see that price has made its way back to its TD9 count breakdown level. That's at the uh, 57.81. Again, it needs to close above the high of its TD9 count at 57.85 to truly trigger the A to B equals CD pattern that's actually in place as we speak right now. But it does have to deal with this resistance level. So on a pullback here, we're looking at 57.26 as being the first level of support inside the ES Mini for its daily time frame. On a five-hour time frame, much like the NQ, we're trading below profile support that opens up the door for lower price. I'd say around the 5670 area, we're testing support on the 240-minute time frame, support being the bottom of its profile. That's at 5736. We're trading below after a TD9 count roads meant to indicator top on the two-hour time frame chart. We are trading below its bullish structure profile at 57.51. That could open up the door to 56.91. 60-minute time frame chart. Uh, does not have any kind of a bottoming signal or below profile support. 56.93 is open. The 30-minute time frame chart is a testing support, and that's that breakout level. So this breakout level is at 57.35.75. 57.35.75. We've hit that. Watch that. If we close below that, that suggests lower price. I would expect that this will hold at least for a few minutes out here because we've got that TD9 count pattern inside the 15-minute time frame chart that is completing right now. It'll well complete in 11 minutes out there. That should run. That should at least result in a rally towards resistance. The first level of resistance, 57.48. The next level of resistance, we've got 57.53 probably. That's the asset and change line, which on a rally will go ahead and move a bit higher out there. So expect and anticipate right, right now a little bit of a rally, just maybe a small counter trend relief. It would turn in perhaps something more than that if we were to see a close back above about the 57.65 level out there. But let's just take this one step at a time right now. And Peter, that's your review of the ES Mini in detail. So we are at a stage here where we should see a bit of a rally. Now it's time to watch watch those resistance areas. Let's go take a look at some other requests that have come in. The first one from John, or the second one, I should say, or the, is really from John C. He wants to take a look at the 30-year Treasury and the TLT, so we're going to look at both. 
We'll start by taking a look at the 30-year Treasury momentarily. I uh, just have to scroll down and get those charts. Here we've got the monthly, the weekly, and the daily. So on a monthly time frame, John, the bigger picture, we can see that prices trade into a bearish structured profile. So it's up against resistance. On a weekly time frame, we have an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Uh, that uh, doesn't uh, complete until we get up towards the 132 level, 131.29, something like that. We're above resistance, uh, both the profile and its oscillator change on, on a weekly basis. Support would be at about the 123.06 level on a retracement. That's the weekly chart. The daily time frame chart has got a TD9 count top. And here, if we take a look at it, price is trading with inside its profile. The uh, level of support is uh, really two levels. 124.16 is one. 124.02 is the other. And that's what price should do is head back to those areas. If we close below 124.02. Price would go target that swing point from September 3rd, and only a close below that low, that low being 122.17, would things start to really uh, uh, start moving to the downside. If we take a look at the 30-minute time frame chart, trading below support, so no bottom signal there, no bottom signal on the 60-minute, no bottom signal on the 120-minute uh, time frame chart. I would say no bottom on the 240, no bottom on the five-hour time frame chart. Well, the five-hour time frame chart, let me take that back. This candle here is going to go ahead and complete at 2 p.m. It is trading into a support out here. That's the bottom of its bullish structure profile, right around the 124.28 level. So I'd watch that. I would say, uh, John, if price closed below that 124.28 area, now this candle that we're in doesn't close until 2 p.m. out there, but watch that number, watch that level. That probably gives you an idea of a, as a clue as to where price wants to head. But the daily time frame chart is telling us to move back to 124, what about 16 to 124.02. So that's what we see when we take a look at bonds. But now let's go take a look at the TLT. Let's actually close this chart down just free up some resources it's going to get us to a gold silver gdx chart we'll come back to uh, taking a look at that market but right now we're going to go take a look at the tlt so just give me a moment to get up there and here we go so the tlt all i'm going to really provide john is with the levels to be watching now in the case of the tlt we can see that price uh, yesterday found support at the bottom of its daily profile i don't recall that being the case inside the 30-year treasury at all what price should do here on the TLT, the downside target I'd be looking at is 97.81. That's assuming I'm not watching what's going on on the 30-year. So 97.81 would be a likely price target. What you'd want to watch for in the TLT this week is does price close below the top of its weekly profile? That's at 98.93. If price holds that area, someone's got to say, hmm, something to think about. But again, the 30-year Treasury is giving us a different message than what we're looking at inside the TLT. Uh, let me uh, populate this. For some reason, it didn't populate with our tools. No topping signal here that I see. Let me just make sure. Yeah, no topping signal uh, that I've got. Doesn't matter if it's a bearish engulfing candle. Just no topping signal. Well, let's let's look at it like this. Actually, there is a TLT on a weekly basis, John, as a TD nine count top that formed on December 29th, and that high, which is 100.57. You know, is is a top and prices tested and rejected that level so far out there. So I said that the TLT doesn't have a top. Uh, I'm going to change that, and the, it will not have a top if price were to close above 100.57. So in this case here, you're watching the top of its weekly profile, and that's at the 98.93 level. Close below that suggests 96.73 would be the number. On a monthly time frame, let's populate this. It's in a, a breakout mode. We are trading above profile resistance. This will be the second month above that level. So it's looking like longer term, this suggesting that the TLT wants to head higher. So, John, see, I hope that helped you out. As always, thanks so much for your request. ELO inside the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at Moderna. M-R-N-A is a ticker symbol. So we take a look at the monthly time frame chart. It's got a TD9 count bottom. It's got that the key level of support being 62.55. I believe that's where price is likely headed to. Uh, volume on that was 91 million shares. So far this month, 87 million shares. Price is pushing down ELO into a monthly swing point with volume. That says that that level should at least get tested. Now, it might get, uh, it might get taken out in which case we'd have a new A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. The weekly time frame chart is in bar number eight, but it's not the low. Maybe you get some type of weekly bottom between next week and the week after. Price is trading into its swing point on a weekly basis from November 3rd, 37 million shares there. This week we're down with 24 million shares. Uh, last week we were into it at 48. That suggests that that low also wants to get tested. That's just confirming 
what we looked at on the monthly time frame chart. That number is at the 62, 62.55 level. On a daily time frame, we are right now trading below profile support and a red oscillator and change line. Yellow, I don't know where this closes the day, but if it does close the day below those levels, those levels being 65.12, that's suggesting lower price. The swing point on a daily base that Moderna is trading into takes us back to September 12th. Volume error, 23 million shares. Today so far, 2.8 million shares. So much lighter volume as we move in there. Doesn't matter. Moderna likely to head lower. So ELO, I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for on that request. But you had a twofer. Your second request was to take a look at the GDX. We'll have to uh, finish this off when we get back to this break. But if you take a look at the monthly time frame chart, no topping signal at all. This says longer term, the GDX wants higher price. The GDX last week negated a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. It says we want higher price as well. We'll finish this off as soon as we get back from this break. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry August 9th and 23rd for more live trading action. For this month only, use code LARRYOG24 at checkout to save $50 off your first month as a subscriber to Live Trading Fridays for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYOG24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
folks, we'll take a look at uh, the uh, GDX, the uh, ETF for the uh, miners out there, and it is uh, it's right now testing um, the top of its profile. It's it's been above it, so right now I'd say it's testing support, and that's at forty twenty three. Everything looks good on the daily. Everything looks good on the weekly. Now, if we did close back below the top of its profile, um, 4023, that could be signaling to move back towards support anywhere between 3903, 3943 as the uh, as the area. But right now, everything is pretty darn bullish with regard to the uh, mining equities out there, as well as Goldilocks. So ELO, hope that helped you out. Let's go take a look at our next request. Ticker symbol here is OKLO. Don't ever recall looking at this, the actual name of the company is OKLO Inc. So let's go see what this is doing. Why didn't it switch? Okay, here we go. Having one heck of a day. You've absolutely got a profile change in trend signal today on its daily time frame. So that would suggest that on a weekly basis, if OKLO can close above 788 today, and we're at 791, that would increase the odds of a move towards 957 level. Let's pull this back a little bit. I don't have a... Uh, yeah, I've got a small A to B equal CD pattern to the downside. So we'll call this a buy the D point pattern. Does it really matter? It does not. So with this uh, profile change in trend, which just simply requires two close above 661, that suggests that a dude where price should target is it's where it broke down from. And that breakdown level is at 915. That's the TD9 count breakdown area. So 915 and 957 are the targets. You'd prefer this to close above, again, the center of that weekly profile. That's at 788. Monthly chart not providing us with much information out there. So I hope you, that helped you out on that one. Dude, you also wanted to take a look at CRBP as the ticker symbol out there. So CRBP, I do recall looking at this one in the past. But let's take a look at what it's doing right now. It is trading below its a daily oscillator and change line and trading below profile support. So even though it's rallied just a bit, it's, oh, no, it's, oh, I see today's action. This thing fell off planet Earth out there. Wow, look at that wide-ranging bar. Holy shnikes, this is Corbis Pharmaceuticals. Okay, let's start from the monthly time frame first. First of all, uh, that is not going to confirm a TD9 count top out there, so that's not doing anything. But price is trading below that red oscillator and change line now. And if it continues to stay below 22, 23, dude, this is suggesting lower price, absolutely. So that's the first number to be watching. If we look at the weekly time frame, where it's just traded back into. So this broke out, uh, not with a TD9 count pattern or anything like that, just simply a wide-ranging bar, and we're back inside it. That's the bar from January 26th in 2024. And the volume there, 33 million shares. Dude, so far on a weekly basis, we're at 8 million shares. So lighter volume than, we're, than what we're at uh, uh, versus the breakout area back in uh, January 2024. No, ma no matter what, though, even though we're inside that candle with lighter, lighter volume. Now, it doesn't guarantee that we'd get, get back to there, but I think this is coming back to where it had broken out from. And on a weekly basis, you know, at a minimum, it's going to have to be the low from January 19th out there, and that's at the 567 area. So got 567 is one price target on the weekly basis. On a daily time frame, holy cow, I don't know that we're going to be able to assist you with a whole lot. Well, I take that back. Here we go. Here's the breakout. So the breakout on the uh, straw, straw line across here. Let me just squeeze this a bit. Let's scrunch it. And let's draw a line. It won't be it won't be dead on balls accurate. But it's going to be pretty close. So here is where price is pulling back to at least. And that's the low from the trading session of January 26, 2024 out there. That low is 1625. If price closed below 1625, it's likely going to get back to where it had broken out from. And that would be, I would have to say, at least the high of January 25th. And that high is 847. Now, we don't know which way this is going to go. On the daily breakout, the volume out there, I think you were asking, 33 million shares so far today. We are down with uh, 7, 8 million shares, 7.7 million shares out there. So um, I don't know if the volume will keep up at this pace out there. Uh, so you've got potential support out here, uh, dude. But if price closes below that, it will likely go back and fill that gap out there. And that's what I see when we take like a ticker symbol. CRBP, I hope you're not in it because that was a nasty move to, uh, uh, overnight to the downside from about 50 bucks down to 21 buckaroonies out there. Let's go take our next request. This is coming in from LB. LB would like to take like a ticker symbol NXE. I think I've got that uh, fired up already. So let's take a look at NXE. 
We do. And NXE is uh, trading right now at $6.24. What do we know about it? Well, we know it's got a road momentum indicator bottom. It uh, completed that pattern uh, back on the trading day of uh, September the 10th. And now we've got an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. So what you'd be watching for here, um, LB, is some type of bearish reversal candle. That would confirm a sell of the D point top. That would then suggest that we head back to support. 566 right now would be a price target. Uh, but uh, and we're trading into a swing point here on a daily time frame from the trading session of August 26. There was 5.7 million shares traded that day. We're moving into a 3.7. You're moving into the swing point with volume. At a minimum, the low of that swing point will get tested again. That means if we close below it, I would expect or anticipate a, at least a test of 634. If we close inside the swing point above 634, then we should get to 662. If we can close above 662, then we're likely going to head to 722 out there. Um, so that's the bullish or bearish case. No, no bearish case or anything uh, right now because you need a bearish reversal candle. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, the reason that price has stopped where it did out here, uh, LB, is because price ran right into that oscillator and change line. So that's the level of resistance at 628. And if price can close above that, well, we should see another attack at the 655 area. LB, between 655 and 734 on a weekly basis, is the sell zone. All that tells us is just simply, you know, have your seatbelt fastened because it could get a little bumpy. If we look at the monthly time frame chart, monthly time frame chart, I see a wave number seven top out there. That's letter G. That led to a consolidation with inside the monthly profile. I say consolidation because price last month found support and this month at the bottom of that profile, 529. So longer term, you got a consolidation between 529 and 831. Uh, daily chart still looks good out there and you'd love to see it close by that weekly oscillator and change line so you're long no reasons at this stage here to not uh stay long out there lb thanks for writing and have a, a wonderful weekend hope that helped you out gte wrote in and would like to take a look at a couple different symbols nio is one of them now nio formed a road momentum indicator top it did it with a bear shooting star candle on september 17th out there so far, that's led to a test of its oscillator and change line, which it has done this morning. 524 GTE is a number to keep an eye on. If price closed below that green oscillator and change line, it increases the odds of a further move lower out there. The weekly time frame chart does not have a, a, a topping pattern. We are trading above the top of its bearish structured profile. A close uh, today above 496 would be a bullish signal and tells us about a weekly profile change in trend. And on that monthly time frame chart out there, uh, it's running into resistance right now, which is the center of its profile. You'd love to see this close above that at some point in time in the future. If you can close above the level of 540, then you're over time, you're up to 957. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We're going to uh, switch over, take a look at emerging markets, uh, see what they're doing out here. This is for uh, GTE. Uh, emerging markets uh, yesterday closed. So it's got a TD9 count bottom. That went ahead and confirmed on September the 11th out there. And yesterday, it took price above, closed above its TD9 count breakdown area. That was at 43.52. So all that is bullish out here. What price is doing right now, it's dealing with a TD9 count top that formed on August 19th. And that's really the key level that you want to see price close above, which is 43.91. The top still remains in place. We've got back up there. The price can close above that. Quite frankly, it'll set up a gigantic A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. On a weekly basis, a close today above 43.35 is going to be a bullish outcome. You will have a, a close above the top of its uh, weekly profile. On a monthly time frame chart, uh, this month at the end of September, that doesn't mean this coming Monday, but the following Monday, GTE, the EEM is going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count top. So that says to you, watch to see what's going on inside the EEM. If price does not close above on a weekly or a daily time frame, 44.64, that could be telling you to expect an anticipation, uh, anticipate a pullback. But let's take a look at that uh, signal, you know, after the uh, end of the uh, after the end of the month out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to the EEM. Let's go take a look at uh, OMF. This is for McGuppy. McGuppy is looking for an entry point in this. I don't recall the symbol out there. Uh, I don't have them all memorized, but OMF is One Main Holdings, Inc., and as we take a look at this, and you're looking for an entry, so you get a nice daily roads momentum indicator bottom. That went ahead and uh, formed out here back on September the uh, 11th. A lot of things happened on September 11th out there. Now, we don't have any kind of a top. Price did get back, though. Oh, I take that back. Let me oh, hold on a second. So the TD9 count top, it completed on August 29th. The high of that pattern was 50 even Steven. We closed at 50.15, so that top has been negated. So no top in place out here. Um, but price, and we're just trading with inside yesterday's bar. So as long as price is not closed below uh, yesterday's low, I know you're looking for a long entry, and yesterday's low was 48.67. If price were to close below that, then that would tell us that your entry point could be between 45.55 and 47.09. Now, we haven't looked at the weekly or the monthly to understand the intermediate or larger term picture, and let's do that now. On a weekly basis, a close today above 48.59 is going to be a bullish outcome. Why? That would be a close above its oscillator and change line, and price would be above all uh, resistance out there. Well, I would say all resistance. It's above its oscillator and change line and profile resistance. That would suggest a run for its highs. Those higher it's in the 55 level. However, on a monthly time frame, you do have resistance at 50.80 out there. Uh, we are trading above its green oscillator and change line, so monthly is bullish, but you do have re potential resistance. So your entry point on this. First, we take a look at dance steps. You've had five days up, one day back, one day up. Now, maybe this is one day back. Maybe you get a two bar, two or three bar. 
uh, pull back. So maybe the actual entry into this could be uh, sometime on Monday or between Monday and Tuesday out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to one main out there. And uh, McGuffey, and as always, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Uh, Ron R. would like to take a look at the uh, silver charts. He wants to really just focus in on the daily time frame. So let's do that for Ron. Let's open up the uh, charts here. And on a daily basis right now, let's just only look at the daily time frame. Here's what we know. We know that price is dealing with where the sellers are located, Ron, and that's at the top of the profile. Those sellers are located at 31.58. If the buyers can overcome those, a close above that, then we'd see a move to 30. I'm sorry, to uh, yeah, to 32.11. 32.11 is the TD9 count breakdown area. And if price is able to close above that, then that says that the A to B equals CD pattern that's actually in place right now. It's just that it's dealing with resistance levels. Here's your A to B point out here. Let's just move that over to the C point. Give me a moment. So that would be moved about right there. We're really at about the one to one area. That doesn't mean sell it. Uh, please, that does not mean sell it. Uh, so I would say at this stage here, 3158 is a key level of resistance. Support, I would say, would be at about 3040 out here. And price should go target that 3211 area. If anything, it should be dragged up by a gold that does not have any kind of a uh, topping pattern out there. It's in full bust out, breakout mode out there. So that's what I see on the daily time frame chart. Now, you didn't ask about the weekly or the monthly, but maybe somebody else would like to know what's going on there. In the case of the monthly, we have a consolidation with inside its profile. We're looking at the December contract here. Support is down at 27.14, was tested and rejected last month. Resistance, which is where price should head to, is 33.50. This on a monthly basis it is a slightly bullish structured profile, meaning the center line is closer in proximity to the bottom than it is to the top. Because we're above it, buyers should be able to push price up to 33.50. That makes that 31, 31.59 uh, level a key area to watch on the daily time frame. Weekly chart is all out bullish. Trading above its oscillator and change line, which is green, that's bullish. And trading above last week's high, trading above profile resistance. This tells us, yes, price wants to make a move to 33.50. So the daily time frame, giving you what those uh, battles are next. But silver uh, looks and remains bullish out there. Ron, hope that uh, provided the information you were looking for. SNP wrote in, would like to take a look at XBI. So let's get XBI up on our screen out here and uh, see where this is headed to today. So the only top that I see out here, uh, SNP, is the double top. Price got back to a Rhodes Mintum indicator top that took place on July 26. Volume on that swing point was 8.2 million shares. You got into that and tested and rejected it yesterday with 13 million shares. Now, interesting. What that says to us is that price should get back up and test that high. That high I'm referring to is from July 26th, and that high is at 100, I'm sorry, is at uh, 103.08. On today's pullback, price has found support at that oscillator and change line. So we're above profile resistance, above the oscillator and change line. Conditions here are bullish. We pushed in that high with volume. We should go tackle that high one more time. Now, at that high, you also have weekly resistance at 103.08. It's also a weekly TD9 count top. Now, the volume on that weekly TD9 count top, our number eight, July 26, 39 million shares. This week, we're pushing into it with 44 million shares there. That tells us that we should get back to retest that high. So that just simply adds on the daily basis what we first took a look at to what is likely to take place out there. On that monthly time frame, XBI is bullish. It is above the top of its uh, bearish structured profile, still dealing with swing points. For example, the swing point from February. That swing point had volume of 242 million shares. So far this month, we're at 102. That says we're coming up in the monthly with lighter volume. So what you've got out here with clarity is you've got significant resistance in this 10308 level. You get above that S&P and it's smooth sailing up to about the 14150 level. Just kidding you. There's never smooth sailing, but 14150, I wasn't kidding you about that. That would be its monthly TD9 count breakdown resistance level, and that would be talking about getting up to that level over time. Ron, you have a great weekend as well, and yeah, go Tigers. I don't even know where they're at. Are they? Uh, do they have any chance of uh, playing in the uh, playoffs this year? It's September 20th. We must be getting pretty close to that time uh, of a uh, playoff season, right? I mean, usually playoffs go until November this time of year. In any event, that's what's going on. We take a look at XBI. I don't see any other requests out there. 
just going to make sure here. Well, we're going to go to break in a couple of seconds. So I'll try to figure out what we're going to go ahead and close out the show with. Steve Rhodes with TFN and all the U.S. indices still trading to the downside. The only sector inside the S&P 500 that's trading to the upside is the utility sector. We'll be right back. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. Hey, why don't we close out the show, just take a look at the indices, the daily and the weekly time frame, see what we can get to out here. So we take a look at the, um, we take a look at the uh, daily time frame out there. You'll see that today is going to become bar number eight of a, a TD9 count pattern out there. If a TD9 count pattern is going to form to identify the next top inside the uh, Dow, we're going to have to still spike above yesterday's high out there. And we'll have to do that either tomorrow or on Tuesday. If we do that, then we'd have a TD9 count topping pattern. The same is true for the S&P 500, if that's a pattern that's going to identify some kind of a top out there. In the case of the NASDAQ, it did get back to its TD9 count top yesterday. Uh, that's at the 19,938.89 level. It closed just below it. Um, or not, 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 not just below it. It closed below that level. So that T9 count top is still in place out there. Uh, prices above its green oscillator and change line. Maybe it's just trying to fill that gap. On the Russell 2000, uh, there is a negated its TD9 count top yesterday. Uh, although I don't have it drawn in here, there is an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Nothing bullish there. However, if on uh, Monday and Tuesday of next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 
uh, we start spiking above the high from two days ago. You could get a TD9 count top there as well. Some eyes having a rough day, but nothing bearish about that at this stage of the game. Just really filling yesterday's gap. Dow Transports have just simply confirmed a Rogement Dominicator top out there. That suggests a pullback to the breakout level of 15,532. Daily time frame, NASDAQ Composite closed just below its TD9 count top at 18,017. That still is in place. It could also do a TD9 count top. All this really suggests to expect and anticipate that maybe what we're going to see is at least some type of spike higher. Maybe it's more than that. If we look quickly at the weekly time frame charts, I know I've only got about 30 seconds out here on a weekly basis. Uh, Dow Jones Industrials negated its roads to indicator top. This says it wants higher price. The S&P 500 today with a close above uh, 56.69. We'll do the same, negate that weekly top out there. NDX running into oscillator and change line resistance. The Russells trading above its green oscillator and change line suggests it wants to chase back to the highs from August out there. The semis, uh, I think they want to go target the 5236 level. Uh, the transports out here having a, a tough day. Uh, all they did was found resistance at that 16258 area. That's your key level of resistance. Well, folks, it's the end of the week. Please have a fabulous weekend. I look forward to seeing you on Magical and Mar uh, Magnificent Monday. Just be safe out there. Take care. And thanks for being here this week.